voice which seeks to speak comfort and safety. But it is only when you speak. Because it is your voice that makes the difference. We pray, Lord, that you will speak to the hearts of the family members. For those who are prone for vengeance, remind them, leave vengeance to you. For you and you alone know how to handle it. We pray for those who have committed this wicked act. Or we pray that they will seek redemption in you. They'll turn to you and give themselves up, Lord. So that they will recognize that where there is evil, there has to be a recompense. We pray then for this nation. And we ask that you will continue to guide our thoughts and our spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just a quick plug for the Global Leadership Summit. Which comes to us on the 22nd and 23rd. I am asking the persons who have been there. Um, please note, Sister Joy is taking the names for me. And we hope to do the registration this week. It has to be this week. Because as you know, it comes up on the 22nd and the 23rd. If you have never been there, speak with Sister Joy. She will tell you it's a leadership summit, special and unique. And we encourage you to be a part of it. All right? So please register um, with Sister Joy. We have to send the registration in this week. We continue our reflection then on our missions and evangelism focus for this month of October. I have invited the reading of Acts chapter 2 as the basis for our reflection today. I can't be too long today because I have to go to Dumfries. Some of you are going to say amen. Thank the Lord. But I'm inviting a reflection and I hope that before the month is out I'll be able to Come back to the passage. Okay, it's a very exciting passage. It's a very exciting passage. For those of us who God has called, he has commissioned us to share the gospel. There are some lessons in this passage that are very important for us to grasp and to practice. So last week, we reflected on John's gospel chapter 3. And we reflected on the experience of Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a well-cultured religious man. He was a leader. And he experienced a crisis of faith. Because after being so meticulous in his religious practice, he came to the place where he recognized that there was no joy, there was no satisfaction, and above all, there was no assurance of eternal life. It is a word of warning for those of us who go to church. We look good. We talk the language at church. We know how to greet one another. We know the scriptures, but we don't internalize them. We don't believe. We haven't come to believe. And Jesus, through that experience, took the time when Nicodemus come to him in the night. And I believe that Jesus spent a whole night with him. John summarized the experience there. But I believe that Jesus spent the entire night with him trying to explain to him what it really means to experience God. And we reminded him that one, works can't save you. Two, God is doing something bigger than what you are thinking in your own mind. For God so loved the entire world. A world of Jews, Samaritans, and Gentiles. In Nicodemus' mind and his understanding of his faith, it was only the Jews who had exclusive right to God. Jesus says, not so. Jesus says, for God so loved the entire world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. Should not perish. But have everlasting life. For God sent his son not in the world. To condemn the world. 
Not to condemn the world. Not to condemn the world. But to give the world an opportunity to be saved. God is working. Amen? Amen. God is working. God is doing a big thing. He's working. Acts chapter 2 now. Jesus has ascended to heaven. The disciples that he called unto himself, which we reflected on last month, where Jesus says, come follow me, and I will make you, I will equip you, I will prepare you to become fishers of men. That mission comes into focus in Acts chapter 2. So Jesus is ascended into heaven. It is Pentecost. The Holy Spirit descends upon the believers. And Mark writes us a very exciting passage there. It is interesting. The main players in the issue of salvation, God, the church, in this case the disciples, the church, and the world comes together in this passage. Very interesting. Very interesting passage. So God empowers the disciples. He sends the Holy Spirit to continue to do that which Jesus started. To continue to do. It is important for us as the church, as the people of God, to understand why we are left in the world. Let your light so shine before me that they may see your good works and do what? Glorify the Father. Hello? We're not left here for our own sense of importance. Every believer who is left here has a mission. A mission. And this second chapter of the book of Acts speaks to it. So this crowd that Peter is addressing, this crowd that Peter is addressing is a typical crowd that the church has to minister to. There are those who have a knowledge of God. There are those who will give consideration to the things of God. But there are those who will always be ready to mock and ridicule the things of God. Amen? Amen? Don't forget last week's sermon. God still love them. So, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes. And he comes in a public manner. He comes when those who know Christ, the disciples, and those who don't know Christ were mingling together in the community. They were there in the community together. And something spectacular and miraculous happened. The Holy Spirit comes. The disciples are speaking in unknown tongues. As they speak, it attracts public attention. I don't want no Christian faith that can stand the scrutiny of the public. There's no Christian who is supposed to be running and I did. For God has called us to operate in public. Amen? Amen? Therefore, we're not going to no church when there's no window. We're not going to no church where they're locking and you're locking and that's it. We're not subscribing to any faith that says that we must not engage in the activity of public life. We're not subscribing to that. 
Because our faith is for public scrutiny. For it is through our public scrutiny that God will be seen, understood, and hopefully glorified. Let your light so shine before men. We do not light a lamp and put it under a bushel. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. We say amen. We say amen. amen. So don't give me don't talk about a Christian who don't come in the public space. That's where God called us to operate. Why? For we are the salt and the light of what? The, the, the earth, the dark world in which we live. So, Peter is there in the public space. The community comes out and them say, wait, I want to go on. Wait, I want to go on. I want to go on over Rosemount Church. I, I want to go on. I, I want to go on up there, sir. So they have an input. They have a say. They raise a question about what is happening among the Christians, among the believers, among the apostles. The Holy Spirit has come. And true to form, there are those who are seriously, genuinely seeking to understand what it is. Others have come, and in a couple seconds, they dismiss what is happening. What did they say about the disciples? Look how man, man, look how man in early. The man then drunk already. <laughs> they are just light. I want to them Christian people. I would not think they care fool. They are just light and then drunk. As far as they're concerned, we are idiot. Then dismiss me, and then ready to go about them business. Where was God in all of this? Where was God when the, when the community is dismissing the church? Where was God when the community is dismissing a fresh and a new experience of God? God was right there. Praise the Lord. God was right there. So yes. The crowd is dismissive. The crowd is ready to move on. And God raised up one of the twelve. When it comes to this issue of missions and evangelism, it does not matter how crude and disrespectful and dismissive the crowd is. This passage tells us this morning that God have some people there to be safe. Amen? 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 Amen. From Peter's perspective, from the disciples' perspective, if they were like some of us Christians today, some of those people who this we would have get peace away tongue. We that tell them peace away mind. And we would consign them to hell. No, sir. No, sir. The reason why them behave like that, Pastor, because them ungodly are wicked. Them the people feel go go to hell. And them the people God make hell fat. Now say here some Christian talk. <laughs> and if a me I did God. <laughs> But I send them down at the furthest part of hell, make them burn. <laughs> That's a possible reaction. And very often, you have some Christians that have that sharp tongue. But listen to me. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon a believer, it makes a difference. It does what? How oh, you know that? Simple. Simple. Is who get off his, his talk. That's the most exciting thing about the text. Who rise up to talk? Who, who stood up to talk in this text? Peter. No. Step back a couple. 50 days before this. 
50 days before this Pentecost experience. 50 days before this Pentecost experience. What kind of man was Peter? What kind of man was Peter? We know he was a sword swinging man. Him draw his sword. And him say, we are going to war. <laughs> Imagine a man going to tell Peter, nine o'clock like a man in saying junk and Peter no saying he no junk. <laughs> Before this experience, Peter wouldn't catch his ears this time with a sure catch his neck. 50 days before this experience, this is a Peter who, in his anger, feeling that the Lord diss him, publicly denounced Jesus. I don't know the man. Don't ask me about him. Three times he did it. So I no chance. I no mistake. But it is this Peter. This Peter. This Peter. That stood up on that day. And is bringing a witness. To the community. Men of Israel. Listen. Men of Israel, listen. Let me explain to you what is happening here. Brothers and sisters, I am so excited about this text. I tell you what. When the Holy Spirit comes upon the believer, it is not to bring attention to the believer. When the Holy Spirit comes upon the believer, it is about empowering the believer to be a witness. A witness. The first thing that they did when the Holy Spirit came upon them at Pentecost was to call the attention of the world, not to themselves, but to God. This is what the prophet spoke about hundreds of years before. This is not new as you understand newness. This is what God has preordained. And therefore, any church in which the expression of the Spirit is to provide members with the opportunity for their self-interest must be denounced. It must be a witness to Almighty God. This is what the prophet Joel spoke about. What is it? In the last days, saith the Almighty God. In the last days. In the last days. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I see I don't have the time this morning so I'm going to just cut and just tell you. Go back and read what Timothy write, what Paul writes to Timothy about the last days. It is a wicked time. It is a murderous time. It is a time when men and women seek pleasure rather than God. It is a time when people don't want to hear anything about God. It is a very difficult time in which to live and practice our faith. But it is that time where God says he will take charge. He will turn up. He will have a visitation. He will do something new. See a time that the devil seemed to be running away with it. God says, no, no, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The church must have confidence in this God. The church must have confidence that if it is a battle, God will not lose it. God has never lost a battle. Never. And you will not live long enough to see that happen. It will never happen. 
For God says in his word that the gates of hell shall not prevail. That's what God says. That's what he says. And it is not the gate coming against the church. It is the church going against And when the impact of the church gets upon you, it must break down. Must break down. For God has said so. In the last day. The ridicule is there. The laughter is there. You listen to all commentators dismiss the church as irrelevant. Oh, what church people are doing? Oh, what church they have to do? God help this world if the church never there. God help the world if the church wasn't here. If we were not still teaching and practicing righteousness. If we were not proclaiming to the world that righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a reproach to any people. What if everybody was doing what was right in their own sight? Hey! Hey! God help us. In the days of the judges, people did what was right in their own eyes. Thank God that God hasn't abandoned the church in the last days. <laughs> <laughs> For in the last days, said the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Yeah? Yeah? Your God is active. My God is active. Very active in this time. Doing this work. So they are laughing. So they are ridiculing. So they are dismissing the church. And what do we know? God just called one servant. Peter with the other eleven. Filled with the spirit of God. Empowered by the spirit of God. Look here. I love this. He stood up. The others were in agreement with him. They gave him the space to speak. And he spoke to them. You see when God calls a man. He's looking for a courageous man. <laughs> he's looking for a courageous man. He's, he's looking for a courageous man. So, so, so Paul writes again to Timothy and he says, Timothy, look here. All I want me to describe going to happen around you. But you have one task. Be instant. Preach the gospel. In season, out of season. Preach the gospel. Rosemount Missionary Church members, preach the gospel. Rosemount Missionary Church members, preach the gospel. Everywhere you go, preach the gospel. Don't tell people about your church culture. No waste time tell people about what we do at Rosemount Missionary Church. At Rosemount Missionary Church, we do. Don't tell them what you do. Just preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Tell the man that from the guttermost to the uttermost, Jesus says. Jesus said. Tell the mothers who have lost their sons that there is hope in Jesus. Tell the mothers who are struggling with their 12 year olds who want to turn shatter. Tell them to go to church and pray in the name of Jesus. Tell them, no father in the house, you know, nobody fi grab him up and lick him down. Tell them, Jesus says. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell the young men driving flashy car, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is a way of destruction. Tell them, tell them, tell them, tell them, be 
courageous when you stand. So Peter stood before them and he said, You see, you know, a who will crucify Jesus? <laughs> a who will do it? You with ungodly people crucify Jesus. But I have a message for you that though he was crucified, God did not allow his flesh to be decomposed. No way, no grave could hold his body down. For when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, then the dead in Christ shall rise. You killed him. You thought you got rid of him. But God has raised him up. God. Devil send him come in buck up on God. God. The almighty one who asks no question of man. Who has never been instructed by man. Who needs no power from man. God is God. He is the almighty God. Creator of heaven and earth. Peter said. You crucify him. You crucify him. Yes, that's what you did. And you were glad. You were laughing. You were happy. But God. But God. But God. But God. But God. God have a plan that must come to pass. God have a plan that must come to pass. Nobody and nothing can stop it. One man stood up. He was courageous. Discerning the times by the Spirit of God. And he declared with conviction. There are too many Christians who don't conviction, you know. You have conversion, but you know, no conviction. You don't believe a thing while you're reading a Bible. I don't believe a thing. Church is just a nice place where you go. Meet some nice people. Hug and kiss and sing and go back to your yard. We need some conviction in your soul this morning. To say that this Jesus, this Jesus, whom you have crucified, he is risen. He is alive. And he is alive forevermore. This <laughs> Jesus. Friday when you crucify him. But Sunday morning up from the grave. He arose. With a mighty triumph. Or his fall. He arose the victor. From the dark domain and he lives forever with the same story. He arose. He arose. Hallelujah. Christ arose. Oh yes. Oh yes. And the songwriter says I serve a risen savior. He's in the world today. Do you serve him? Do you serve him? Does it matter what men have to say? If you alone are going to live and pray and worship Jesus in Jamaica, will you do it? Will you do it? Do you have that conviction? Hmm? Or the songwriter puts it, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Don't even go with me. Still I, I will follow. Why? For I have decided to follow Jesus. Yes, you crucify him. You were there. You were there. You readily agree with them when they crucified him. But God, hallelujah. Isn't that the story of salvation? 
is not the story of David. So while they are there in the crowd, laughing and just dismissive and disruptive, just dismissing the church and the things of God, <laughs> God by his spirit, just say, look here, I may create you, I may have you, I may mark you out for salvation. Come! And even while Peter speak it, and he told them about this salvation, he says, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Repent. Turn from your wicked and godly way. And God will save you. Five thousand of them. Oh, glory to God. Five thousand one day. Turn to Jesus. Talk the truth now, church. Talk the truth. At the beginning of the text, when them are laughing and I say, man, them junk. You don't think so they would have done sick Christian before they done? Talk the truth. Talk the truth. Talk the truth. Talk the truth. I am saying to you, you will see some people today out there, this in church, say, no, no, go so. You see when Spirit of God doing thing? You see when Spirit of God doing thing? When I was growing up, we used to sing a little song. They got to move. They got to move. You remember? They got to move. They got to move. When God get ready, they got to move. You may be white. Mm -hmm. You may be black. You may be white. You may be poor. When God get ready, you got to move. You got to move. You got to move. Yes, you got to move. You got to move. When God get ready, you got to move. You may be, you may be, you may be, you may be low. When God get ready, you got to move. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. While they were there mocking, the Spirit of the Lord came forcefully and He brought a conviction to their souls. And they asked, What must we do to be saved? Do you know yet? <laughs> Might not come down yet. But the Spirit of God is moving. He's moving. He's moving. He's moving. He's moving. Comes into their experience. Challenge them. Show to them that there is a hell to show and a God to glorify. And before the day was out, the record says 5,000. 5,000. 5,000 get saved. How much sermon was preached? One. One. What was different from this proclamation? It was the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God possessed the being of Peter. Spoke in him and through him. To the praise and the glory of Almighty God. It seems to me then that there are some people God have out there to be saved, but your mouth needs to open. It seems like your mouth, the one that you, you have, God wants to use it. He wants to touch it and use it to his praise and to his glory. You may have never preached before. That's all right. You have no resume with how much sermon and how much conversion has come because of your evangelistic outreach. <laughs> Perhaps you have never opened your mouth before. Ask God today. Ask God today. One prayer. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Let's do your work with me today. Touch my lips. 
so that I may speak. I may speak only as your spirit bids me. Open my eyes, Lord, so that I will be able to grasp what's happening around me. Grant me the spirit of discernment. Let me understand that though they may be mocking today, before the day is out, they will be praising you. Such is a confidence in our God. And it is all because of the blessed Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that it is not in our might nor it is in our strength that we work. Thank you that it is not in the verbosity of words. Thank you, Lord, this morning that it is only as we wait upon you patiently and invite your spirit to work in and through us that your purpose will be made manifest. I pray for the life of this church. We have been praying, we have been seeking you, we have been asking you, breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Today, as we wait upon you in this place, we ask that you will visit every heart, speak into every spirit. Let there be no doubt as to whose voice we are hearing. Let it be the unmistakable voice of the Lord Himself. We pray that as you empower us not to focus on ourselves but to focus on you, the Savior of the world. Dear Lord, many persons are out there hostile. They are in the enemy camp. We pray for courageous Christians this morning who empowered by the Spirit will march to the enemy camp and take back what he has stolen from you. Oh God, today, oh God, today we pray that you will touch lips, you'll touch hearts, you'll touch feet, you'll touch hands, so that that which you have called us to accomplish will be realized, and it will bring praise, glory, and honor to your name, for Christ's sake. Amen. Lord be with you.